First, Senator, I want to talk to you about Iran and everything that's happening at the UN. But first, Ted Cruz. I wouldn't expect you as a Democrat uh, to be one of his big fans, but what about the dysfunction of the Senate right now? Republicans, there's many Republicans. John McCain seem, seems as upset as some of you Democrats are. Well, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, uh, uh, Senator Cruz, of course, has within his rights to speak, but uh, I guess he's had a lot of Cuban coffee here. Uh, the reality is, is that he knows what the end result of this is. He knows that we're going to have a vote uh, to proceed to basically accept the House's uh, level of funding, but uh, not accept uh, their end of the health care program that provides for millions of Americans an opportunity that they didn't have to get coverage and protects millions millions of others uh, in ways that, uh, including pre-existing conditions and uh, lifetime caps, and has given millions of dollars back to seniors in prescription drugs. They have no solution for that. So I just think uh, that this is really uh, not in the interests of the Senate or the country. I think this is more about uh, cementing himself as a leader in the Tea Party nationally, and that's unfortunate to use the Senate's time this way and to create a, an environment which makes it very difficult uh, to have a sense of confidence and progress as we deal with major issues, the government staying open, the debt ceiling on the horizon. And what message do we send in the world, for example, to Iran when we are trying to get them to follow the path of the Security Council's resolutions? And they'll say, well, if we do that, will we ultimately uh, find a Congress willing to you know, lift the sanctions because they seem not to be able to get along with the president? These are enormous challenges. Uh, let me also turn to foreign policy. I know that you were among the senators who were uh, writing to the administration about Iran and the overtures from Iran. You said you were disappointed by some of the rhetoric in President Rouhani's speech to the United Nations yesterday. I have to share with you that I was at a, a group, a gathering of journalists who met with him uh, off camera. Some of it was off the record, but uh, on the record was the fact that we asked him about his uh, refusal to be meeting face to face with President Obama yesterday. And he said he has no problem shaking Mr. Obama's hand. Uh, regarding negotiating, we need a plan of action to ensure that these meetings reach the conclusions that we want. He said, we did not have enough time to make that happen. We never have a problem shaking Mr. Obama's hand. He added, it was only two days ago that the U.S. proposed such a meeting and that they were not opposed to it, that it's a sensitive subject. We have not talked at this level in 35 years. So we have to take these steps very carefully. Now the foreign minister, Zarif, has just said at the United Nations that he wants to jumpstart the nuclear talks with the group of Security Council members, the so-called P5 plus one, uh, the group of the permanent members of the United Nations, as well as Germany. So do you now see sort of that the glass might be half full rather than half empty, or what is your posture? Well, uh, Andrea, uh, the charm offensive sounded uh, a lot better from Iran than it did from New York. Obviously, Rouhani was speaking to a different audience in New York. He was speaking back to Iran and to others in the world associated with Iran uh, in some of their work. Look, uh, there is a peaceful path forward. I mean, uh, I, I hear the Ayatollah talking about historic flexibility. I, I hear uh, Rouhani talking about constructive engagement. Uh, I would say deeds, not words. That would be my, my phrase in response to them. And there is a peaceful path forward. That peaceful path is embodied in the four Security Council resolutions that call upon Iran to uh, conduct themselves in a series of ways that would show that their intentions are peaceful uh, and that would stop the threat of their nuclear power for nuclear weapons. This is not the United States saying this is what we believe. This is the world saying this is what we believe. And I don't know what Iran needs. So we're, we're happy to have a conversation with them, but they need performance, not just a charm offensive. Understood. And uh, I asked him about the nuclear issue. Issue, what is negotiable, what is not. He said everything is on the table. The level of enrichment, whether it's 20 percent or 5 percent, he said all the nuclear sites. He said we want to be transparent. We want to reassure those who have concerns when they have reasonable concerns. He did reiterate Iran's right, as they say it, uh, as a signatory to the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty, to enrich as 40 other nations do. But he said everything's on the table. But most interestingly, Ann Kurim, our colleague, of course, had the first interview with Rouhani last week.
And when asked about Ahmadinejad, his predecessor's denial of the Holocaust, he said, uh, look, I'm a politician, not an historian, to Anne. Well, this week in New York, today, when he was asked again about Ahmadinejad and the, the denial of the Holocaust, he said that what the Nazis did was a massacre of Jews, that it was a crime against not only Jews, but Muslims and Christians, and a crime against Jews is a crime against all of humanity. He said he would not get into the numbers because, again, he would leave that to the historians, but that it was a massacre and something that should not be tolerated. So very strong language on the Holocaust. It does seem, as you point out, that he is also speaking to the audience back home, and that picture, perhaps, of him and President Obama that did not happen is not a picture that they feel that they could show back home right now. Senator. Well, I think that what, what, what's happening here is that, the, you know, the president's simple offer of a quick briefing, a quick meeting, and a handshake uh, tested this bubble. Uh, because if the Iranians cannot even ultimately have a handshake, then you have to wonder what are they ready for back at home. Uh, and what they need to be ready for back at home is to pursue the edict of the world uh, virt by virtue of the Security Council resolution. So, you know, Rouhani, uh, I know there's a lot of hope here, and I'm hopeful. But at the same time, here's a man who boasted during his run for presidency uh, that, in fact, look, uh, I, when I was the negotiator a decade ago, I avoided sanctions, and yet we proceeded on our nuclear program. Uh, and so I think we have to keep that in mind as we deal with him now. Senator Menendez, thank you very much. I know you've got to vote, you've got to go, but thanks very much for taking the time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew.